Once the traveler shows up, everything will get better. Hey, Aurora, over here! Oh, hey there, traveler and Paimon. So you were looking for us? We came as soon as we heard. You did? That makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Is this what happiness feels like? The heck? Where is this coming from? You are truly the best friends I could ask for. If my vegetables met you, I'm sure they'd grow all the more lush for it. Uh, what makes you say that? Well, it's a compliment. I heard that complimenting people makes them happy. Did it work? Are you happy? It's that obvious, huh? Well, you're right. I feel like an aphid who can't find a flower. Granny is... yes. Granny's a genius, as you know. Geniuses often stand in the way of others, leading them to despair. And on top of that, I'm her grandson, which means I get a double dose of despair. If that sounds serious, it's because it is. So please, help me deal with her. Oh, uh, what happened exactly? You make it sound so dramatic. I had to get you involved. Most people can't deal with Granny and... Exactly. You were the first person I thought of, other Granny. Granny is what I called you when we first met, and I know I got told off for it, but please, let me off for calling you that one more time. It feels like there's something unique about you. Even Granny Seat Lolly treats you like you're someone special. And everything that's happened since we met suggests it's true. If I had a woven scroll that listed the 40 people who can deal with Granny Seat Lolly, your name would be at the top of that list. Wait, so who are these other 39? Also the Traveler. The rest of the list is just the Traveler 39 more times. Ugh, please, you've got to help me. This is really important. Although it looks like I'm just hanging around with nothing to do, inside, I'm distraught about the path ahead. Granny Seat Lolly is blocking my way and I can't get past. But now that you're here, I can start moving again before time runs out. You know how much Granny loves to drink, nap, and read light novels, right? If you offer her what she wants, I'm sure you can lure her away. You mean use those things as bait to distract her so she won't notice what you're up to? That's right. Don't worry, I won't make you do all the work. I've planned it all out, including what you need to say. All you need to do is walk up to her and tell her this. Dear Granny, I have the latest volume of Mirage Warriors here, along with the special edition spin-off of The Case Files of Miss Orith. Want to read them together? She'll pretend not to be interested for a few seconds, then think of an excuse to say yes. As long as you're the one doing the fishing, she'll definitely take the bait. He's just trying to butter you up, even Paimon can tell. He's just saying whatever it takes to persuade you. No, I mean it. Granny might not say it out loud, but I can tell she has a soft spot for the Traveler. If you say so, Paimon's still not convinced. But if all we have to do is say a few words to see Lolly, it's hardly putting us out. It's as easy as watering vegetables, and if my vegetables were here, they'd... Uh, sorry, there's no time for vegetable talk. Just trust me. Let me take you to her. With you here, everything will be better. Granny. She's gone. She was standing there at the cave entrance to stop me from going in, standing right in my way. Oh, you meant literally standing in your way. This whole time Paimon thought you were being metaphorical. Granny says it's tacky when light novels use contrived metaphors. I don't want to be tacky. Wait, but aren't you comparing yourself to a light novel? Isn't that kind of contrived? What? Oh, darn it. Yeah, see, Lolly 
Lily probably figured there was no point standing in your way anymore. Auroran, whatever it is you so desperately need to do, you're now free to do it. I don't think it'll be that simple. Granny wouldn't release me from her grasp so easily. She might have laid a trap for me, or maybe when I get inside, I'll get caught by one of her surveillance spells. Yeah, let alone lay a trap for you. Unless... You haven't been up to no good again, have you? I just want to rescue someone, and Granny won't let me. Rescue someone? Oh no, what happened? Could I ask you to go inside and take a look at him? I think he should be safe for now, but he'll be at greater and greater risk as time goes by. But then what are you going to do? I'll have to wait outside, or I might fall into one of Granny's traps. Uh, you mean you want us to fall into our traps instead? No, you'll be fine. Granny's traps will recognize it's the Traveler, so they'll leave you alone. Sure it is. I mean, I've told my aphids all about your heroic deeds, so I assume Granny's told her traps too. Y you can't just assume that. Either way, I'm counting on you, Granny. Well, sounds like someone's life is at stake, so we should probably head in and check things out. Guess we just keep following this path? Aurora seemed pretty confident that Seat Lolly's traps won't harm us. But still, it can't hurt to be careful. Whew! We made it in without a hitch. Maybe Seat Lolly's traps can recognize us after all. Wait! Is he asleep? Or sick? Do you think this is the guy Aurora was talking about? Also, what the heck's been going on here? Lots of strange and mysterious stuff around. Hmm, could be. Let's get Aurora in here. He'll know what this is all about. Sorry, Granny. <sighs> all grown up now, are we? I'm truly sorry. Now that you're one of the six heroes, you think you can do as you please, do you? Hmm? Well, explain yourself, you dummy! How exactly were you thinking of helping that spirit duffer? Aurora and... and... uh... Hey, Seed Lally. Huh? Huh? Oh, when did you guys... Oh, drat. I wasn't expecting them. And now the Traveler probably caught me yelling at Auroron. Oh, this is not a good look for me. <laughs> Hello there, you two. We were just, um... Uh, Auroron and I were... We were... Uh... Play acting. You know, acting out some scenes from a light novel, quoting the lines. I didn't actually mean what I was saying. <laughs> right, Auroron? Huh? Uh, yes, that's right. I owe you an apology too, Traveler. I asked you for help, but I forgot to watch my back and Granny caught me. And now we're play acting. Traveler, come on, now's not the time for games. So what are you two up to exactly? Did something happen to this poor guy? Ugh, <sighs> yeah. Leela's his name. He got into some trouble during a clairvoyance session. Uh, it's a kind of spell that lets your spirit leave your body, so you can access secret knowledge. You know what a medium is, right? You've probably come across them in novels. Anyway, it's similar to that. Leela's problem is his spirit has gotten lost and can't find its way back to his body. So in other words, his body's here! But his soul's gone? Well, technically the soul and the spirit aren't quite the same thing. But yes, in a nutshell, that's basically it. I just wanted to help bring Leela's spirit back. <sighs> and I wouldn't have stopped him if it was anyone else. 
But the issue is, Mr. Leela here is what we call a spirit duffer. What's a spirit duffer? Someone with no spiritual sensitivity whatsoever. Spirit duffers can't sense or control spirits, much less use spells on them. Now, there are certain methods that can force even spirit duffers into a clairvoyant state. But, well, I mean, <laughs> look what happened to Mr. Leela. The spells of the Masters of the Nightwind are all based on dealing with spirits. And so are all our problem-solving methods. So for spirit duffers, even our healing methods don't work on them. So, if they get into trouble trying to use a spell, there's basically nothing we can do. Yes, there is. As long as the soul is involved, I should be able to help. You hear that? No prizes for guessing what Auroron's bright idea was. Oh, because of your special constitution, right? But isn't it kind of risky for you? I'll be fine. Granny's just worrying too much. I'm feeling fine now, so I should be able to do it safely. Besides, it's probably our only hope of bringing Leela back. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. What happens if it's not as safe as you're hoping, hmm? We both know you'll risk it all to try and rescue him anyway. <sighs> Honestly, you're such an idiot sometimes. Um, this is a tricky one. It's true that Auroron could be self-sacrificing to a fault, but it's also true that Seat Lolly tends to worry too much. Hey! That's Granny Eatsley to you! Who do you take me for? I obviously know how to handle this. Huh? You do? Wait, really? You actually know a way to save him? Uh, yes. I mean, it's a crude solution. But that's beside the point. The point being, don't interfere when Granny's already got things under control. <sighs> anyway... Traveler, I was actually going to ask for your help on this. My plan will take quite a lot of work, and it's a little too much for one person. Oh, great! Well, it's a good thing Aurora brought us here, then. I intend to use a two-pronged approach. The first is the crude method. Basically, it's looking for a needle in a haystack. See the thing I've drawn around Leela's body? That's a gateway to the Night Kingdom. Once the gateway is activated, all roaming spirits in the area will be drawn to it. If we're lucky, we'll find the one that belongs to Leela. I'll lend you some of my power like last time, so you can use my clairvoyance. It only works if you use this projection sensor first, though. So don't forget that step. Don't worry, this time nothing can go wrong. You'll just feel like you're in the Night Kingdom, and you'll see a lot of roaming spirits around you. All you need to do is gather them up. You can leave Auroron to sift through them and find Leela. Since he wants to help so bad, he can take the hardest job. Draw him back, using what I know about the instincts of spirits. As we all know, clairvoyance is usually conducted with the goal of unraveling mysteries. If we can find out what mystery Leela wanted to learn the truth of, we can use that to draw his lost spirit back here. I'll do some clairvoyance of my own and channel it through Leela's body. That should give me some idea of what he was thinking. Oh, Pina thinks she gets it now! The first approach is like fishing with a net, and the second is like fishing with bait! Just like how Aurora wanted us to lure you away with the promise of light novels! Um, your point would have been just as clear without the example, Paimon. Uh, what? Uh, don't think I won't revisit this later. But Granny, it's amazing that you can use a person as a clairvoyance medium. I always thought you had to use inanimate objects. <laughs> you can't flatter your way out of this one. But you're not wrong. A person without a spirit is just a physical shell which, for our purposes, makes them an inanimate object. Traveler, just over there is my spirit loom, which will record the fragments I see during clairvoyance. Once I begin, please arrange them on a woven scroll for me. Let me know when you're ready. We should get to work. Are you ready? Don't worry. Hmm. I know this is your first time working with it, but... I have a feeling you'll do great. Oh, 
the woven scroll is ready. This looks like a person. Who is it? Uh huh? Hmm. It's Sanhaj Kampore. Huh? You mean that Sanhaj? Aurora's ancient name hero guy? That's right. He was not only one of the six heroes, but also a legendary border master of our tribe. Five hundred years on, and the remains of his spirit is still so strong. Border master is an honorable title, by the way. It's only given to powerful figures like Granny Seat Lolly. No, not like me. The most powerful border masters can expand the borders of the Night Kingdom, and temporarily manifest part of it in the real world. I'm no amateur with border spells, but San Hodge is in a league of his own. They say his border mastery was what turned the tide in the Battle of the Marriage of Ari 500 years ago. Legend has it that San Hodge summoned a miniature Night Kingdom and exploded it to defeat the encroaching Dark Calamity. Whoa, he must have been really strong! Of course, it came at a great price. As far as I understand, both San Hodge and Tainoch, the leader of the Tribal Coalition forces, gave their lives to activate this spell. I don't know what Leela was thinking. Even I'd think twice before seeking out San Hodge Kampore during clairvoyance. So what sort of spirit duffer in their right mind would... <sighs> uh, I guess folly is the greater part of bravery. Uh, I'm starting to feel like something else is at play here. I think I'll pay a visit to his house and see if I can find any clues. Yep, you can keep gathering the roaming spirits. That won't be affected. Hopefully you do find Leela that way. Because it'll save us an awful lot of trouble. But before that, it looks like we now have another problem on our hands. Connecting with the spirit of Sanhaj Kampore has caused quite a stir. I think we may have just spooked all the monsters in the area. A traveler, if you've got some time, could you go and get them to pipe down a bit? We don't want them to start attacking innocent bystanders. It's fine. I can handle that. Oh no, you're staying right here, mister. The traveler has enough to do already without coming to your rescue. Alright then. Sorry, traveler. Over to you, I guess. All right, I'm heading out. See you guys later. Embrace the ice! Coming, Satova! Shattered, torn to oblivion! As one with wind and cloud! Fallen leaves, adorn my night! Freeze to the core! Vengeance will be mine. Flickering candlelight. <laughs>